For those of you that follow me on YouTube, you'll have heard me talk about the concept of custom performance metrics before on a few occasions. And rightly so, because this is a really important subject, because it's the performance metric that will help you to select the most robust parameters from an optimization. If you choose an inappropriate performance metric to use, it doesn't matter how much effort you've put into developing your algo, you won't get the maximum value from it. I've provided some simple code in a previous episode that explained the process of implementing a custom metric in MQL5. But in this episode, I'll show you how to implement a specific metric that I consider does a superior job of selecting the best parameters. It's called Compound Annual Growth Rate over Mean Drawdown. The Compound Annual Growth Rate over the Mean Drawdown, or Average Drawdown, meets all the key requirements of a great performance metric. It happens to be one of two of my favourites, including R squared. But before we make a start, I just want to make you aware of the relevant resources that I've already produced previously that you might also be interested in watching at some point. I've actually covered custom performance metrics in three episodes now. The first two of those were episodes 9 and 10 of the backtesting and optimization series, where I looked at how to get the most out of custom performance metrics. And then in episode 2 of the MQL coding series, I looked at how you'd actually go about implementing a performance metric in MQL5. And if you're interested in either of those, then you can find links in the description below. In this episode, I'm going to focus specifically on the implementation of CAGR over mean drawdown as a performance metric. So let's take a very quick recap to set the context for today's episode. Performance metrics are used to measure the performance of a system. And specifically, in any optimization that you run, you can use the values that come from the custom performance metric to compare how well different parameter values perform. And in a nutshell, it helps to answer the question which parameters are best or which parameters are most robust. Now, the choice of performance metric that you make can actually dramatically affect the outcome of your optimization process. So it's really important that you make the right choice. Now, in terms of general principles around performance metrics, you need to make sure that they contain a measure of both reward and also risk. So the most simplistic form of reward might be the return. And in terms of risk, you're probably looking at something like drawdown or trade losses. Now, if your chosen performance metric only encompasses one of these components, for example, the return, then this will lead to suboptimal parameter selection. Now, of course, in any backtesting software, you'll have a choice of performance metrics to use. So here you can see a list of the ones available in MT5. But often the default metrics available are not going to be the most effective for your optimizations. And often traders are better off writing their own performance metrics. And that's exactly why MT5 provides this custom max option. So whenever you select this, it enables you to use your own coded performance metric in order to rate or score the effectiveness of the parameter values that you're testing. Now, a very common performance metric is the return over the maximum drawdown. So, for example, the compound annual growth rate over max drawdown. And this is very similar in principle to the Kalmar ratio. The only difference is that the Kalmar ratio is over a set period of time, whereas with compound annual growth rate over max drawdown, you can be flexible on what your backtest period is. 
So if we first take a look at what the compound annual growth rate is and how this is performed, you can see that it needs the final equity at the end of the back test, which gets divided by the starting equity. And then that is all raised to the power of one over the number of years that the back test took place over. And then one is taken from that total. Or if you'd prefer, this can be calculated on a number of days basis as shown here. So this represents the reward component. But of course, as I said before, we also must incorporate a risk component into any performance metric. And so with the compound annual growth rate over max drawdown, this of course is the maximum drawdown itself. And although this is an extremely popular measure, it does introduce a major bias. And that bias is because the frequency of the drawdowns is not considered. So it will help me to explain this better by looking at an example. So to do this, let's compare two equity curves that represent the results from two different sets of parameters. So this is the first. And taking a closer look at the drawdowns now, we can see in percentage terms, there are five drawdowns, all of approximately the same size. So because each of these drawdowns is approximately 30% of the equity, and of course, using this metric, the maximum drawdown will also be approximately 30%. But let's now look at an alternative equity curve. So here you can see that one of the drawdowns is of a similar magnitude in percentage terms as the first system, but all of the other drawdowns are significantly smaller. And let's now compare how each of these equity curves compares from the viewpoint of compound annual growth rate over maximum drawdown. So because both curves are over the same period of time, they both have the same starting equity and also the same final equity. This means that the CAGR value will be identical for both of them. And if we're just measuring the maximum drawdown, this also will be identical. And so clearly they will achieve the same compound annual growth rate over maximum drawdown score. However, it's clear to see that the red equity curve is much more preferable to the blue one. But unfortunately, CAGR over max drawdown can't be used to differentiate these two equity curves. And this is why CAGR over the mean drawdown or the average drawdown can be a much more effective performance metric at differentiating between parameter values in an optimization. So let's take a closer look at this. Well, firstly, the compound annual growth rate or the reward element is absolutely identical to the previous metric that we looked at. So that's calculated as shown here. But as we said before, there's a bias that gets introduced when using max drawdown that was due to the frequency or the number of major drawdowns in the equity curve is now eliminated when we start to use the mean or the average drawdown instead. And that's the primary reason why this is a much more effective metric to use. Now, just a couple of points about CAGR over mean drawdown. As I've covered before, the position sizing method that you use throughout the duration of the back test is really important. You must not use fixed position sizes because that means that the percentage drawdown figures are likely to be much smaller when the equity is high. And so this introduces a bias in itself towards drawdown values that happen at the beginning of the test when equity is lower. And so to remove this bias, you can simply use a scaled position size, which is relative to the equity. Now, if you want more information on that, I suggest you watch the previous episodes that I alluded to at the beginning of this video, where I explain this in a lot more detail. 
Okay, so now we have that common understanding around the rationale for CAGR over the mean drawdown, we've got to the point where we need to start looking at how the code is implemented for this metric. So click top right now to go to part two to see how this is achieved.